everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be doing another Killing Floor 2 tier list. This is going to be about all the HRG weapons because it's been brought to my attention that I never did a tier list for the HRG weapons. So let's begin. First one is the HRG Arc Generator. This is the version of the microwave gun, and this is for survivalist. This weighs quite a bit, coming in at 9 weight, but it can be upgraded all the way up to 10 weight, which is pretty heavy, although survivalists can take extra stuff. This weapon is also quite good on other classes if you want to take it for boss wave, because this is the only weapon that deals double damage towards all bosses. All bosses take double damage from the secondary fire. They also take 50% increased damage from the primary fire if you are brave enough to get that close to them and continue to zap them. It's good against crowds, flesh pounds, scrags, robots. It's really good against everything. Compared to the other HRG weapons, I would say the arc generator is one of the best ones, even though it does come at that hefty weight. And I would probably put this one up into S tier because it is so strong and, I mean, double damage towards bosses. What else could you want? Next, we've got the HRG heal throw. This is another very meta weapon. Um, this is for Medic. This only costs 1,000, which is quite good for a tier 3 weapon. You don't have to pay as much. It does come in at an awkward weight of 7, I believe. This weapon is essentially two healing weapons in one, and this is the best healing weapon that Medic has provided that you can stay close to your team. You can heal and apply buffs with either the primary fire or the secondary fire. Secondary fire works the same way that pretty much all medics weapons do. They shoot out healing darts that can heal allies. The primary fire sprays out healing gas that heals all allies and injures all enemies as well as applying the toxic effect over time. This is probably one of Medic's most meta weapons and just for that I would probably say it also belongs up into S tier because of that. Although, you could argue as an actual weapon, it's quite a bit lower, and if you were taking this on any other class, it's really bad. It's right down to D tier because you can't apply buffs with other classes like you can with Medic. Speaking of Medic weapons, we have the HRG Insurgent. This is the railgun that the Medic has, where it has healing darts that can punch through multiple enemies. You can shoot through, I think, up to 10 enemies before the dart will actually stop, or maybe it's through all enemies. Maybe that's what the max penetration means. To heal allies, and the healing darts on this one actually do pretty high damage. The main fire is also a good source of damage, doing high damage and applying the EMP status effect. If you apply that to any enemy, it cannot use its special ability whatsoever. So, sirens can't scream, bloats can't vomit, husks can't explode. Very good things from that, and it can be a pretty good backup weapon for Medic, or a second weapon, whatever you want to call it. Um, more of a primary weapon or a specialized weapon for sniping enemies at a distance and applying the status effect. It does come in at a somewhat awkward weight though, so it isn't the easiest to use, and compared to the other HRG weapons, it's pretty good. But I don't think it's one of the best ones. I would put this one probably into B tier compared to the other HRG weapons and compared to Medic's weapons because we actually have surprisingly a lot of Medic weapons here. Up next is the Kaboom Stick for Demo and this one is pretty much the most meta weapon for Demo and for Survivalist. And even as an off perk weapon, it's very strong. It weighs 6, which is a perfect weight for a lot of classes. A lot of classes can usually fit up to 9 weight, and then they take a secondary weapon that's 6 so that they can have it. Demo does this, Commando can do this. This works very well as a secondary weapon or as a primary weapon as it scales really well with upgrades. You can't injure yourself with this the same way that you can't injure yourself with the grenade pistol from Demo. Secondary fire does even more damage, being able to fire both barrels out and can actually out damage something like the rocket launcher unupgraded, provided that you hit with all the pellets. If you jump into the air this works the same way that the regular double barrel does and it will fling you backwards or fling you upward depending on which direction you're looking. This is great for extra mobility, it's really good against bosses like Hans or the King Flesh Pound that want to chase you down and hit you. It does a lot of damage towards Flesh Pounds, it does very well against crowds, and the fact that you can't injure yourself as well as it's not that expensive, this thing's going right to the very top of S tier. Next we have the HRG Scorcher, this is a firebug weapon that is like the grenade pistol. It's primary fire, you can fire out a flare that does high damage uh, on impact as well as does damage over time. That's a good thing. It's secondary fire, fires out a broken flare that can also do damage and damage over time when it hits an enemy, but it will also leave behind floor fire. So it's usually best to use the secondary fire to fire flares above the targets. That way it drops flares down and goes all the way through the crowds, leaving the floor fires to burn them up. Ground fire really helps with this. Um, this does help a lot if you're playing Firebug. This weapon is pretty bad on anybody that's not Firebug because you don't have any bonuses with it and you get limited ammunition. It's not particularly a bad weapon overall and compared to the other HRG weapons, I think it's okay, but nothing super special. 
I would probably put this one in about the low end of B tier. Up next we have the Buckshots. This is a weapon for support. This is a revolver that you can buy one of or two of. They are a tier 3 weapon, but you can purchase one early on and it makes a really good early game weapon. That's really where it shines after that when you start getting two of them and you start throwing upgrades into it. The upgrades don't pay off as much and you're adding a lot of weight to your loadout. Even for somebody like support, it does put them in somewhat of an awkward situation when it's fully upgraded. One of these is perfectly fine to throw upgrades into or just to keep as the initial two weight, and that's probably the best thing for it. Like I said, it works really well early on. It does as much damage per shot as the 500 Magnum, which is what this is based off of, but this damage is spread throughout pellets. So that means each of the pellets is affected by the armor of the Zed in question and the location of where you hit them. It's not going to be as strong as the 500 Magnum against most enemies. Against enemies that have shotgun weaknesses, it will probably be as strong or stronger against them, but everything else, it will likely be weaker than the 500 Magnum, as well as it has nowhere near the reach of the 500 Magnum. Overall, as a weapon, I wouldn't want to take it as my only weapon. I would probably put this one into D tier, even though on support, you can still totally make it work with a bunch of other weapons uh, if you want to take this as your backup weapon or your third weapon. Next we have the HRG Tesla Launcher. This is Berserker's weapon. This one fires out microwaves as its primary fire and fires out EMP grenades as its secondary fire from the underbarrel grenade launcher. Microwaves are always good because they do high damage towards the more heavily armored Zeds. So things like Scrakes or Flesh Pounds you'll do more damage to as well as Husks and Sirens. Anything that has metal on it you'll do more damage towards. Although this one does have some interesting multipliers when it comes to bosses not doing as well with the microwave damage as something like the Helios Rifle or especially the microwave gun. So that's something to keep in mind. The EMP grenades are always useful because you can't apply the EMP effect which I discussed when we were talking about the incision. You can prevent Flesh Pounds from raging, Scrakes from raging, Husks from blowing up sirens from screaming, anything like that, which is always going to be useful. Although I don't think this is one of the stronger HRG weapons, and it does have some hiccups when it comes to using it, especially with Berserker, because it's usually best used in combination with a melee weapon, usually the Hemoclobber, since the Hemoclobber is just the most meta weapon for Berserker. And I think it's an okay weapon overall. I would probably also put this one somewhere on the low end of B tier. Next we have the HRG Vampire. This is the Husk Cannon for Medic. This can suck blood out of enemies, applying the same effects that the Hemogoblin can, meaning that it will bleed out enemies so they, do, they take damage over time. They are bleeding so you see their body shrinking. They look anemic then. And this will also apply the bleeding status effect so that they move slower, they do less damage. You can use the secondary fire once you've collected enough blood to fire out blood spikes, which do really high damage and can pierce through multiple enemies. But you can only have a max of 5 of them as it costs 20 blood every time that you do it, or 20 of the energy that you build up from sucking out the blood. This weapon is actually really strong as a weapon for medic if you want to use it in that way. And on small maps, it can be quite good. It's very map oriented though, because you can heal with the blood ball that it holds the blood into in the front of the weapon, but you have to hit enemy or you have to hit allies pretty much directly or very close proximity of where you can hit them. That way you can actually get the healing to your allies, which is what you want and the blood spikes can be used to clear up large enemies or punch through crowds pretty well. This works really well against bosses and it does work really well uh, if you're the only person in the team, but for the team I kind of find it lacking. It's still a medic weapon so it's still going to be good and I would probably put this one also into B tier. Next we have the Bastion which is the newest HRG weapon added. This is the Stoner for the SWAT which also surprisingly does assault rifle damage. It's secondary fire or secondary use is that it pulls out a shield. This shield will tick down over time and it will also tick down if it's injured by anything. So if a husk shoots you, siren hits it, whatever it might be, it will tick down over time until it breaks and then it goes on a cooldown or until you disengage it and then it will go on a cooldown and start refreshing. The machine gun part itself is pretty good and it's does enough damage to any sort of small and medium zed. Even to large zeds it can do okay because of its relatively high rate of fire and it does have better sights than what the stoner has. It's also more lightweight than the stoner coming in at 7 weight which is rather interesting. It still allows you to go with very meta weapons with SWAT like the nail gun or the Chris Vector 
or Medic SMG. You can really pair anything with this, uh, even the Glock 18 if you wanted to go super tanky with them. I'm probably also going to put this one up into S tier because it is just so good. Up next we have the Blast Brawlers. This is for support. This is a melee weapon, but also a shotgun fist. This weapon I've always found to be rather awkward since it came out. This is another new HRG weapon. The shotguns attack one after another every time that you go to attack with them. So you fire one shot and then you fire the other shot. Then you can do regular melee things like melee attacks or blocks with them. This weapon honestly doesn't fit very well on support, I find. It's kind of awkward and it's kind of clumsy to use, especially when you take into consideration other weapons that you might be able to use, like the Frostfang, which is just a better melee weapon than this and a better overall weapon in general. They mostly work well on the Survivalist, and on Survivalist you can make them work because they still count as a melee weapon, so you can still get your bonus movement speed if you take Melee Expert at level 10. That's probably the best case scenario for them, and I guess I'm going to judge this off the best case, so I'm going to put this one into C tier. Our next weapon is the Incinerary Rifle. This is for Firebug. This is the M16, but it shoots out fire rounds, which work pretty much the same way as the M16's rounds, just they do damage over time, with its secondary fire firing out a fire grenade. I know I said fire there a lot, but it has a lot of fire to it. This grenade will explode upon impact, dealing fire damage as well as the shell damage, and I think a little bit of explosion damage on whatever enemy uh, is close enough to it and then can do damage over time. This weapon works pretty well on Firebug. It's just like the M16, so if you're very familiar with that and you want to use it on Firebug, you absolutely can. It pairs well with other weapons similar to it, like the MAC-10 or the Helios rifle. Both those are really good options, and I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's a pretty solid all-around option for Firebug, and I would probably put this one up into A tier. Next is the Winter Bites. These are a gunslinger weapon, although you can take them on other classes and make use of them. These are the Spitfires, except for they shoot freezing shots. The freezing shots do count as explosives, at least while they're still moving, so Siren Screams can break them. They deal high damage and they actually scale quite well with upgrades. They also can do splash damage to nearby enemies and they can freeze enemies, which is the biggest draw of them. Freezing enemies is a really good thing, although they are probably one of gunslingers weaker weapons if you want to just use them without taking in consideration whatever else you have in your loadout. They work really well as a status affecting weapon so even if you don't want to upgrade them you don't have to. Uh, even if you just want to take one of them you can still freeze enemies fairly effectively with them and they work pretty decently most of the time. As weapons I would probably rate them kind of lower but as tools I would rate them a bit higher. I think I'm going to put the winter bites into C tier at the moment but if you're just wanting them for the pure utility, I could easily see them going up to B or A tier. And then we have the HRG Beluga Beat. This is for Sharpshooter. Doesn't really work like the Seal Squill that it's based off of. This has two different fire modes, a red or a blue. These have different movement speeds as well as different hitboxes. The blue moves much faster and does higher damage, but it's much smaller. The red will do less damage, but it moves slower and it has a wider area so you can hit multiple enemies with this both of these count as microwave damage i believe so they are quite good against most enemies this weapon also has a very high chance to stagger enemies so it's not uncommon for you to be able to just pretty much stagger lock a boss in place they're really strong as a tool they're not particularly great as a weapon i would probably put the beluga beat in terms of other hrg weapons i think i'd put it up here now let's take a look at some of these weapons and see if we can move them around because this is kind of an awkward list right now where we have a lot of S tiers. These weapons you see a good amount. I might want to move the incision up to A tier because you do see it a decent amount. I forgot about the nail gun. So let's talk real quick about the HRG nail gun. Sorry this is being recorded at a later time, but the HRG nail gun is also a very meta weapon for SWAT. It does piercing damage, which is really good for SWAT because it's a different damage type than submachine guns. It's kind of weird that the best weapons for SWAT tend to be the ones that aren't submachine guns. The nail gun is probably also an S tier weapon, at least compared to the other HRG weapons, because it is a meta weapon. All five of these weapons up here are all meta weapons, and it's kind of weird to put five into S tier. They really belong up here because they are really strong. Nail gun is no exception because you could also pair it with the Bastion, have something to tank with, something to deal with flesh pounds with. Plus, you can combine it with a medic pistol if you want to upgrade the nail gun, or combine it with a medic SMG if you would like to not upgrade the nail gun and just have another submachine gun that can also heal. 
you could also grab C4 if you want to. That's a good combination. So that's where I'd put that on this list. I guess I'll let past Ron continue with the rest of the video. So this is where I'd place all the HRG weapons. If you have any ideas for another killing floor tier list, or if you'd like to see me revamp some of my old killing floor tier list, Feel free to leave those down in the comments below. Special thanks to all the supporters here, either on the YouTube membership program or over on my Patreon. If you'd like to see all the Killing Floor 2 tier lists that I've made, check out this video right over here, and I will see you next time. Bye!